Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Santan Village in Gilbert, Arizona. Santan Village is an outdoor mall that was built in 2007 and was the last mall designed by Westcore, and it's currently owned by Mace Rich. The buzzword for this type of mall is Lifestyle Center, and depending on where it's located, these are some of my least favorite types of malls. One of my favorite things about this particular lifestyle center is the water features. You can see there's smaller fountains like this that are powered by a long trough of water that runs for a pretty good distance and creates a really neat water feature. And then there's even a large fountain like this right here. Santan Village has around 1.2 million square feet of gross leasable space. And there's actually room here and potential plans to expand that to as much as 3 million square feet. It's possible all that extra space might not be necessary now, though. Let's take a look at the mall map to get an idea of how big this place is. And as you can see, it's made up of separate buildings with the storefronts facing outside. And there's courtyards and landscaped walkways that go in between those buildings. There's also several anchors here, including a Dillard's and a Macy's, which we'll see some later on in the video. And then there's also a Best Buy, a Dick's Sporting Goods, a Barnes & Noble, and a Harkins Movie Theater. This is one of the many lounging areas that are in between the buildings of the mall. And you see they've got some nice lawn furniture set out there, and you can even see the streets that run in between the buildings have their own names as well. Here's where the negatives with this place start though. This is located in Arizona where it gets very hot. We filmed this in April and it was around 100 degrees that day. This type of mall makes sense in places with nice weather like California, but to me they make absolutely no sense in the Phoenix area. And while this isn't currently a dead mall at all, I have noticed more and more storefronts closing as time goes on. You can see some of them there, and they seem to be popping up in clusters throughout this mall. As we see more and more of them throughout this video, you'll start to understand why I think some of the planned expansion for this place might not be necessary. It's actually a really pretty mall, but it's just too hot to hang out here for big portions of the year. Here's the Harkins Theater, and this actually gets pretty busy. I just don't know if people do a lot of other stuff at the mall when they come here to go to the movies. Now that building back there behind the fountain with the large glass wall, that used to be the mall's food court, but it closed some years ago. It was full of all your typical food court vendors. Uh, the windows were all blacked out, but there was a small portion of that that was ripped, and I was able to film a little footage of that so you can see what the food court looked like, and you can see the different vendor stalls on either side. This mall actually has several restaurants dotted throughout it, so I just don't think people made it all the way to the back of the mall to even go to the food court. There's a Claire's there, next to a Hot Topic, and this mall does have a lot of your standard mall stores, although it does not have a GameStop. There's no video game store here at all, which is kind of weird for a mall, but that may change in the future with all the empty spaces popping up. There may be room for an independent video game store to open up just like this independent record store just recently opened up. I'm starting to see fewer and fewer record stores in malls, so this was really nice to find. Here's a shot of the inside, and you can see they mostly focus on vinyl records. There is a small selection of CDs and cassette tapes, but just really more than anything, lots of vinyl. And you've got some of your band t-shirts there in the back. They also sell record players, and they had this really interesting old Zenith console record player. They even had the manual. Hopefully this business does well. It looks like it was doing pretty good the day we were there. I really like that display with the uh, spinning colored records in the sun. Now here's another one of the recently closed stores. This is the Charlotte Russe, and Charlotte Russe stores all across the country actually closed recently. I was kind of surprised. I remember these stores being fairly busy, but I guess they just can't compete with online apparel sales now. And here's a shot of the empty store. The trend that I've noticed in recent years is it seems like more of these outdoor lifestyle centers are getting built than actual malls. The last couple of big shopping centers in the Phoenix area, this one and also Tempe Marketplace, are modeled after this kind of approach and like I said I'm just not a huge fan of it in places like Arizona where it's it's unbearable parts of the year to be outside. 
And I think that may be part of the problem here is that I don't think people are doing the typical mall experience where they go in for one thing and walk past a bunch of other stores and see stuff. I think people just, you know, drive as close to the store they're going to go to as possible and then run in and get what they need and get out. Now here's the Macy's. This is the first of the two department stores we'll look at closer. And I have to say, it looks like a hospital in here. I am not a fan of all of the white monotone everywhere. Here's the uh, Polo Ralph Lauren section. And my God, are they out of their minds asking that much for this shirt? It's just a striped shirt with a teddy bear on it and a sailor suit. And you can see, like a lot of Macy's, there's not a lot of people in here. Now here's the second anchor we'll take a look at. This is the Dillard's. And I have to say, I like the interior design of this store much better. It just has that classic department store feel to it, even down to just having these cool looking maps. And there's a little bit of color here too. I like the travertine tile as well. I believe that's travertine. Also, the Dillard's did seem busier than the Macy's. I've always been a huge fan of Dillard's as far as department stores go, and as far as I know, they're doing pretty well. Gosh, that just screams like just classic department store. I love that. I love classy displays like that. And speaking of displays, the colors and lights on this one really caught Mark and I's eye. That's pretty to look at, even though it's just, you know, a silly perfume advertisement. Now we're back outside again in the heat, and this mall does have an Orange Julius slash Dairy Queen. And there's also a play area like a lot of other malls have, but there's really no kids on it, of course, because even though it's covered, it's still very hot. This mall also has a pet store, except for I think they just sell puppies here. But this, this spot had been closed for a while. That little guy looks wrecked. It, I really do like looking at puppies. It's really hard to like not want to buy one, but honestly, the prices that these places ask are a little out of control. Everybody looks like they're just exhausted. This mall also has a splash pad near the play area, and I was really surprised they didn't have it turned on. And you can see the closing Payless in the background there. That's going to be another empty storefront. I understand why setups like this are desirable to mall operators. They don't have to cover any of the costs for climate control for the mall. Everything's covered by the individual tenants. But I think you'll notice there's a lot of cars parked here, but not a lot of people actually walking around doing the mall thing. And I think that supports my theory that that may be what's starting to hurt this place. We even notice people parked in front of one store, come out, get in their car, drive just a couple doors over and park, and then go into another store. Now, I don't know what has more of an actual environmental impact, climate controlling a traditional mall or people driving around from store to store at a place like this, but I can't imagine that's great for the air quality in the local area. Here's another mall staple, the Hallmark Gold Crown Store. I have to imagine these kind of outdoor lifestyle center malls are not fun during the Christmas season in states where it gets really cold. I can't imagine it's fun sloshing through the snow from store to store. I think I'd rather shop in a traditional climate-controlled mall. But from what I've heard, these type of things are popping up in those states as well. Pretty much all over the United States is what I'm hearing from my viewers. It's sad because we're losing more and more of our traditional malls, but it seems like this is what mall operators are betting on as being the future of malls. I think some of the window shopping aspect of going to the mall is being lost here, and I think that may end up hurting retailers in the end. We're coming up to another large empty storefront here, and this is at the front of the mall. I'm not sure when this went vacant, but I think it's been vacant for a while. It was one of the first stores that I noticed being closed. It's a pretty building too, I just don't know how many retailers are looking for that amount of space in a mall right now. And here's another cluster of closed stores, including the former Crazy 8 store, which was kind of the, the tween store that Jim Barry owned. This closed pretty recently as well. Here's a shot inside the store, and this is another thing that may be hurting this mall as well in the coming future, is just national retailers going out of business and closing up their storefronts. Even the fancy tea place couldn't make it. 
It's an interesting name, Nobility. I'm not sure how big of a brand that is. But here's a shot of the inside of that empty storefront as well. All in all, this is a pretty mall, but it definitely has some issues for the location that it's in. Anyways, I'd love to know what you think of Santan Village or open air lifestyle centers like this in general. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey, thanks for checking out my video covering Santan Village. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.